lot of Coloradans have understandable unease about abandoned oil and gas wells that dot areas now covered with houses. Broomfield was testing those so-called orphan wells across its city when it found a problem very close to a construction site. Our Anusha Roy explains what's happening next. Judy Kelly has been doing some not so light reading. You know, it's not something that's my expertise <laughs> by any means, okay? She needed to understand the abandoned wells close to her home. We can be intelligent, you know, when we speak to somebody about our concerns. We're not just saying I'm afraid of it and don't have a reason why. So after Kelly and a whole bunch of other people in Broomfield asked, the city started testing more than 25 abandoned wells this year and found a problem less than a mile away from Kelly. They detected methane underground. The company that um, owned that well has gone out of business. The state has officially accepted what is known as Davis 43-6, an orphaned well that no one else is obligated to fix. So the state steps in. There are 275 orphaned wells in the state on their list that they rank by urgency and usually find through complaints, construction, or their own inspections. It's not the first time they've gotten involved with this particular spot. The well was previously plugged and abandoned by the oil and gas operator. The Colorado Oil and Gas Conservation Commission oversaw that process around five years ago. They were in compliance with the rules and regulations. Then Broomfield tested the site again and found a problem. This well is underneath Grand Peak Way where there is construction on half the road. The other half closest to the well is quiet. The city said building permits are temporarily delayed out of caution. Whether or not there may be some contribution from coal mine gas um, coal mining was uh, performed in this area in the past. Now that the state is involved, it'll continue testing and by next month determine if it needs to replug the well. That's their expedited timeline because the well is so close to homes and a school. So the fire department did test homes over the weekend, didn't find any major problems, but the state also plays a role in making sure it's safe. Said because there aren't issues with the other abandoned wells nearby, that there isn't another source of gas that could then become another problem mm -hmm. in that area. That is one of the reasons they're giving the homeowners in, in that area saying it should be safe in your home right now. So, I mean, initially somebody thought that they had that well plugged yep. and there wasn't an issue. So when the state deals with one, are they circling back at some point to check it again? Yeah, so basically what they said today was that once the work is done that they don't test as frequently. They're mm -hmm. trying to maintain their priority list, but they also said it was a resource issue. The ability to have the manpower to go back. Interestingly enough, the state did just increase the funding for this specific program, so they're working on that staffing and basically ramping up that department. All right, Anusha, thank you very much. Democratic Senate candidate Andrew Romanoff is asking the Colorado Democratic Party, his party, to end its blackout of candidate forums in the Senate race. The party has set strict rules that end up protecting the front runner, former Governor John Hickenlooper, keeping him from being criticized by other Democratic candidates at these events. Hickenlooper, of course, is the handpicked favorite of Democrats in Washington. The Colorado Democratic Party is holding a series of forums where the candidates are not allowed to criticize one another by name. They also do not allow live streaming of these events. Any kind of video recording is prohibited by the campaigns. The Democratic Party told me today that these rules are not new. They did the same thing in 2018. Colorado's Democratic Party is not alone in trying to avoid primary election friction. Five state Republican parties have canceled their presidential primaries or caucuses. Yet President Trump is going to face a primary in Colorado. Parties here can't cancel a primary if there are at least two candidates. And there's now a guy who paid $500 and got a signed permission slip from the Colorado Republican Party so he can take on President Trump. His name is Rob Ardini, a former advertising executive who happens to live in President Trump's congressional district in New York City. I called him up this afternoon and let him know that he single-handedly forced a primary in Colorado. We may have very strong incumbents, but challengers make them even stronger. Uh, so I'm very pleased to hear that uh, Colorado will indeed having, will be having a primary and that uh, I have a little something to do with that. President Trump has other Republican primary challengers, long shots that are still, with all due respect, shorter shots than Mr. Ardini. But none of them have paid their $500 and turned in their permission slip from the party. So they are not yet on Colorado's presidential primary ballot. 
Ballots are arriving in your mailbox now for November's election and candidates are starting to blow up your phone. We told you about the, the textual tension that exists during campaign season in our state. The campaign calls and texts are an exception to our do not call rule. Here's what the law says. It says they're legal if they are made for the sole purpose of urging support for or opposition to a political candidate or ballot issue. It might help to remove your phone number from your voter registration, and you can do that online at GoVoteColorado.com. GoVoteColorado.com. Now, that's no guarantee that that'll end the text because they, they already have your number. When you vote, the text should stop since the campaigns get a daily report on who has gone to vote. Park County Schools didn't even attempt to do school today. Teachers walked out on strike, and rather than try and find enough substitutes to cross the picket lines, Park County RE2 just canceled classes. This is the third teacher strike in Colorado in 18 months. It's been nearly a quarter century since we'd seen the last one. The district is offering the 40 teachers in Fair Play a $2,000 raise. The union wants triple that. No one buys their vape juice and is like, mmm, polyethylene glycol. Gotta get me some of those sweet medium chain triglycerides in my lungs today. Suck down some of that vitamin E acetate. Yeah, nobody likes that stuff. State regulators are finalizing a ban on all of those things in cannabis vape products. This is related to people getting sick around the country. Health workers say nearly 1,300 people have gotten sick and at least 26 deaths have been linked to this nationwide. In Colorado, there have been nine cases reported in the last week, which can be a proposed hearing on those, regu or a hearing on those proposed regulations tomorrow. There are new evacuations in Chafee and Fremont counties today because of the Decker fire. Firefighters want people to clear out of the small towns of Wellsville and Swissvale, that's southeast of Salida. That fire has now grown to more than 12 square miles since lightning started on September 8th. They've got 30% containment. Firefighters work these fires day and night from the ground. But Colorado is the only state where the state fire service is flying those fires after sunset. We revisit the story on that topic from our Mark Salinger. We need to push it out. This is what the new frontier of fighting fires looks like. <laughs> so pretty straightforward. We have a communications plan just like we would on fire. We're going to be using... It's 6 um, p.m. in Penrose, see. Colorado. 1900 dispatch to the Brush Hollow fire. The operational briefing for the Canyon Hell Attack team rarely happens this late in the evening. We have the laser pointers that we've been working with, as well as the LED pucks. Tonight, they're waiting for it to get dark. Sunset brings new challenges for the helicopter. And training flights like this could save lives and homes the next time a wildfire erupts. We're the first state organization in the United States to, to do that. The southern Colorado sunset is pierced by floodlights and the sound of an engine coming inches from a lake. Right now he's going in to do a hover fill with the, with the Bambi bucket. Back and forth, up and down. The helicopter picks up more than 240 gallons of water and drops it on a simulated fire. Nailed it. All at a time when it's hard to see the hand in front of your eyes. He can see uh, all of his surroundings. He can identify hazards uh, both on the ground and in the air. Armed with night vision goggles, the pilot can battle a fire just like if it was bright out. Firefighters on the ground use lasers and glow sticks to guide the copter. A carefully choreographed ballet between man and machine where vision can feel like a novelty. He's working with several teams of firefighters pulling water from the, from the reservoir. Colorado is the first state in the nation to allow helicopters from the Division of Fire Prevention and Control to fly after sunset. You have lower temperatures. Uh, higher uh, relative humidities, and you can actually uh, get quite a bit of work done. From dusk to dawn, the dance continues. If there's something that we can do to help uh, these communities that are affected by wildland fires, I think we owe it to everyone to, to, to do what we can. A battle against fire that not even darkness can stop. For next, I'm Mark Salinger. They'll only fly in the area at night if they've been over that same spot during the day so that they can get oriented without having to deal with the night vision goggles because those cause a bit of tunnel vision. A group of community leaders is suggesting that Colorado consider supporting the future of journalism in our state with tax dollars 
The Colorado Media Pro Project is the work of some current and former journalists along with business leaders and educators. And their new report out finds that Colorado has lost almost 44% of its reporters in the last eight years. Media outlets are struggling with declining revenue. The Colorado Media Project is out with a list of ideas, including using special taxing districts to support independent media outlets. You can read their suggestions on the next Facebook page. A Coloradan wants everyone to feel comfortable in the outdoors. I can't put a, a, a title or a name on it, but it feels like I'm supposed to be there. So she's trying to remove barriers. Imagine the confidence to just create your own parking space wherever you want one. And it's a sign that suggests we found Colorado's largest restroom. Next. You really have to find a doozy to make our You Crossed a Line segment these days in honor of Colorado's creative parking. But that, that'll do it. That'll do it. That is the entrance to a parking lot at Alameda and Logan in Denver. Didn't even get in far enough to look for a spot. Just pulled right off of that busy road and said, I'll take this, the entrance, please. Maybe some of the sidewalk as well. Next viewer named Annalise spotted this bold move. If you see a line crosser that defies common sense and perhaps safety, Email the photo to next at 9news.com or give us a shout with the hashtag HeyNext. What a nice way to start the week. Sunshine and 70s instead of that 70 degree temperature change in 24 hours. Still a little bit of light snow way up high, although the snowmakers at those resorts that open over the weekend are hoping for a little more cold and snow, and that's possible later in the week. I'm tracking not one but two storms. Today's high at 75 is above average. Tomorrow, with the front coming in, it will be dry, and with the wind shift, temperatures will come down about 10 degrees. It's the storm lined up beyond this one that's a little more interesting for the weekend. This front comes through and then kind of explodes with the line of thunderstorms from Minneapolis, St. Louis down to Dallas. High pressure will bring us a mostly sunny day. The winds may increase a bit and we'll be tracking that, especially in and around Salida and the Decker fire area in Denver tonight. Fair skies, a little bit of wind along the foothills. The winds will lie down and then they'll pick back up again, shifting tomorrow, ushering in a slightly cooler air mass, but comfortable temperatures nonetheless. Upper 70s to near 80 degrees for Wednesday when the Broncos take the field after a short week. 
They're back in town Thursday night with a kickoff temperature of 72. Mid 60s Friday, cooler weather for the weekend with a chance of a little rain and snow late Saturday into Sunday. No accumulation at this point and not nearly as cold as the storm we saw last week. Hey, thank you. We are wearing down our state's beautiful 14ers, crowding the trails with more and more people, creating parking problems at Grays and Tories, shooting off illegal fireworks on Mount Evans, the litter that we showed you on so many 14ers, and a new analysis by the Colorado's 14ers initiative adds emergency. The report estimates that 353,000 people visited the state's 54 highest summits during the last hiking season, the 2018 season. That is up 5.7% from the year before. They've been looking at these numbers for four years now, and the number of visitors has increased almost 100,000 people. They've seen increases in traffic on Bierstadt, Elbert, Lincoln, Bross, Democrat, and Sherman, as well as Quandary, Grays, Tories, and Longs. And for the first time, Quandary Peak was the busiest 14er in our state. Previously, it was Bierstadt. It's a simple idea. No one should feel like an outsider outside. When they see these places that they might not have been able to reach or they haven't seen before, um, it's awesome. We'll meet a group taking people places they otherwise might not have gone. And a hike in Colorado could bring you face to face with wild animals or just animals. That's next. Colorado's beautiful outdoors should be a place where all feel welcome. So enter a group called Blackpackers. The founder's goal is simple. Get more people out into nature and cover the cost of what can be an expensive way to spend your weekend. Once I got a chance to be out there, it felt like I was home again. What I noticed, especially in Colorado, I go out to these parks or I go to spurs camping and I was the only person of color I see. My name is Patricia Cameron. I am from PG County, Maryland. 
Black Packers is about camping, backpacking, hiking, getting outdoors, but trying to um, ease the concerns about entry level gear or expenses. I have been in Colorado since 1994. I think that if we can target some of the wealth or monetary issues people have with getting outdoors, they'll be more likely to be able to access it and really find joy in it if they're not concerned about the money related to it. They're genuinely happy to be there and it's an experience that they may not have had, um, as I've been told, without the assistance we've been able to provide. Just to see their faces, uh, when they see these places that they might not have been able to reach or they haven't seen before, um, it's awesome. The next Black Packers event will be a hike and poetry workshop. It's this coming weekend at the Palmer Park Trailhead in Colorado Springs. Saturday morning, 8.30 to 10.30. You can find all that info and more in this article on 9news.com. It's a sign that America's asinine debate over who should be allowed to use which restroom was missing the point because almost all of us can fit in that one there at a restaurant in Westminster. 333 of us to be exact. Apparently, these are just two signs that were not meant to be placed next to one another. That would be the maximum, maximum occupancy for the entire restaurant. The restroom, I presume, is considerably smaller. We'll have your feedback next.
most Colorado thing we saw today is a wild encounter with an animal, but not exactly an encounter with a wild animal. A next viewer named Courtney told us she's always ready to encounter wildlife when she's out on a hike, but was not expecting cows. Nice ear tags. They were wandering the Beaver Brook Trail near Golden. Courtney says her dog noticed them first. She stopped and, and grabbed her, her bear mace because she thought it was a moose. And, and, then, and then she got a closer look. Nope, that is just a cow that, that does not care about her at all. She tried to wait out the cows, but they didn't want to get off the trail. They were everywhere, and they were all staring at me. <laughs> so, and then they started collecting, too. It's like they sent some sort of message, and they all started, like, coming together and staring at me. It was, it was bizarre. So I had to kind of go off trail and get around them a little. Turns out cows don't move very fast. <laughs> Anybody who's grown up in the country knows they'll just kind of collect and move towards you and just look at you. If she'd clapped her hands, they probably would have run away. Courtney says she usually hikes that trail in the winter when it's not as busy. This was the first time she'd seen the cows, so she's not sure if they're always there during the summer or what. We finished tonight with your feedback. Mike Marr doesn't like the idea of the Republicans in Colorado holding a presidential primary. It says waste of time and money. Five states, for that reason, others have decided to do away with it. Mark doesn't like the idea of taxpayer money funding journalism. He says those journalists will be beholden to the government. Thanks, as always, for your feedback. See you next time.